Pasadena is located just northeast of the city of Los Angeles. And over the last 145 years, Pasadena has grown to becoming one of Southern California's most livable and innovative communities. And we are a very unique community, rich in culture and history, highly diverse and highly educated. Our city is known worldwide for many of its historic buildings, such as our city hall, where our GIS team and our IT department are located. But we're also known worldwide for hosting the Tournament of Roses Rose Parade every New Year's Day, as well as having, hosting uh, iconic events at our Rose Bowl Stadium. Pasadena is also known for some great institutions, such as Caltech, that's grooming the minds of the future, as well as real-life rocket scientists at NASA's JPL, NASA, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But Pasadena also has many of the same challenges that are faced by other cities, such as homelessness, public safety, managing growth and development, and expanding city services. And we strive to meet these challenges using what we call everyday ingenuity, applying innovation and design to leading the intelligent city. And through GIS, we bring the spirit of everyday ingenuity to all our departments. We have a great GIS team in the city. They're small and lean, but are solving problems every day. And we have been working on a multi-year initiative to develop our geospatial infrastructure using ArcGIS. We started small, creating a simple parcel viewer, what we call IMAP, just a few years ago. And what we learned is by keeping our apps small and simple helps drive people to want even more. And now, we have numerous focused applications that are providing value to many of our departments. More apps creates more interest and has allowed our capabilities to grow. A great example of this approach is with our fire department. And here is Oscar, our fire captain. Oscar? Look, I'm a firefighter by trade. I'm not a GIS analyst. I can't write code. I put the wet stuff on the red stuff. <laughs> Yet, Yet, firefighters have an innate ability to adapt and overcome any obstacle that comes their way, just what we do. Case in point, as an internationally accredited fire department, I was tasked with developing a way to capture real-time data and present it to our personnel regardless of the interface we were using. Operations dashboard, I have been able to incorporate numerous real-time data feeds and present them in a way that is both intuitive and viewable upon any platform. We can see here, this list on the left is actual live incidents within the city of Pasadena right now. Now, company officers en route to an incident have the ability to dive into premise information that was previously not available or antiquated, as well as hydrant information, target hazard assessments, and key point features that have been, that have been spatially joined to the target hazards. Which means our company officers can now make strategic and tactical objectives based upon actual, not historical data. And we can also see the situational status on, our right, on the right side of our neighboring fire departments in real time, allowing us to see what mutual aid resources are currently committed on incidents within their own jurisdictions. As we can see, the Glendale Fire Department has a medical emergency on East Broadway, and BLS 22, their rescue ambulance, and Engine 21 are assigned. I've also added here on the bottom some simple analytics based upon incident data from the last 24 hours allowing our command staff to see our overall performance in real time. But at times, the department needs to dive deeper into that data. Insights has allowed me to bring in that real-time data we just visualized with an operations dashboard and analyze that same data set based upon variables already available in the data. This heat map shows our eight firemen, fire management zones and areas with the greatest concentration of volume. Based upon this analysis, the downtown area visualized here appears to be the portion of the city with the densest call volume. Also, this, city this area to the north is due to a large number of skilled nursing facilities which are associated with a high number of medical incidents. If I remove the heat map and add a histogram, now the fire chief has the ability to view the call volume for each fire, fire management zone based upon the call categories. But as expected, 12,000 plus EMS calls overwhelm the graph, 
so I provided an easy to use filter over here on the left. Now the fire chief can easily filter out EMS calls, thereby allowing him to see the other categories. Fire management zone 31 now indicates a high volume of technical rescue incidents. And that's due to a large number of elevator rescues within high rise buildings that are located within this district. A link map can provide a visual reference of the relationship between fire stations and where they responded. This map shows the fire stations seen here in orange, which are connect connected to the various locations by a line with the call volume indicated by its thickness. Station 32 located here shows a connection that indicates they have responded numerous times to an area just north of them. This just happens to be Eaton Canyon, which is associated with a high number of technical rescue incidents due to the inherent dangers related to the steep terrain. I've now provided a high level view of our data. Next, let's look at our response times. Based upon our standards of cover report, response time performance measures are analyzed using the 90th percentile. Here you, you can see travel times visualized as a bin map spatially aggregated, with the darkest portions indicating a high number of incidents within a geographical area. And that same baseline data set is visualized over here on the right in the histogram, with the benchmark for this performance measure being four to eight minutes, based on the geographic location of an incident. This was an overview of, on how we are using GIS technology within the fire department. Firefighters are always looking for new innovative technologies, such as how to improve the capturing of data within the field during a special event, such as the Rose Bowl events. So for help, we turn to our GIS manager, Jonathan Robinson. Oscar is a dream customer. As you can see, he gets GIS. We can see Oscar here in action at the Rose Bowl command post. But for large events, Oscar needs a better way to track staff and incidents. So my team put together two demos for Oscar. First, to show Oscar how to track staff, we showed him Tracker. Tracker is a mobile-based application that allows you to track device location in real time. First, we click here to launch the app. And then I can click here to turn it on. That's it, simple, easy to use. Next, to capture incidents, we show him a mobile app called Quick Capture. I can click here to launch the app. Quick Capture allows you to quickly capture data. We created our own See Something, Say Something form that allows you to capture both emergency and non-emergency incidents. I can click here to capture the location. <laughs> a picture. And then I click here to send the data. That's it. Simple, easy to use. Well, Oscar loves it. So we decide to use both apps at the Rose Bowl uh, Gold Cup event. With Tracker activated, we can see the activity of all the staff from the command post. We can even get information related to staff speed and other relevant data. In addition, we put together a heat map that shows track concentrations. We see where staff have congregated or areas of concentration show as hot spots, such as the main entrance and the Rose Bowl Hospital. Well, for quick capture, it shows real-time location of incidents. With attachment viewer, we're able to see both the non-emergency and emergency location and pictures of incidents that have occurred during the event. So we can see that fans are entering into the game, as well as we can notify emergency staff of incidents that occur in the stand, like a smoke bomb going off after the first goal. With tracker and quick capture, Oscar was helped to be able to provide efficient services. This is just one of the ways that Pasadena GIS partners with city staff to explore ge geospatial technology, resulting in everyday ingenuity. And everyday ingenuity goes beyond our GIS team and our fire department, and is expanding rapidly into our planning department with David and Anna. The Department of Planning and Community Development is the arbiter of our city's unique sense of place. Every day, our responsibility is to balance how the city grows and protect its historic character. 
In 2018, we launched Our Pasadena, a program focused on the update of eight specific plans within the city. For those of you who aren't planners, updating eight specific plans at the same time, it's a little unheard of. So we're piloting ArcGIS Urban to enable better collaboration in the early stages of our plans. Establishing a new set of tools to test strategies to modernize and grow Pasadena. We're fortunate to have six light rail stops within the city. Transit-oriented development allows us to meet growing housing challenges in a smart way. By prioritizing our metro stations, we can ensure that future growth is aligned with mobility. Everyone in Pasadena cares deeply about maintaining the balance of how we grow and where we grow. I'm going to pass it to my colleague Anna to tell you a little bit about one of our plans in South Fair Oaks. The South Fair Oaks specific plan, our second oldest plan area, is directly adjacent to Pasadena's historic downtown. Using urban, we can explore neighborhood scale strategies that bring South Fair Oaks into the future, creating a more livable urban form. Starting with data on existing conditions provides the basis for future scenario development. Zoning codes have guided the growth and development of Pasadena since 1917. This is that little book. <laughs> Look how thin it is. It got a little more complex. Just a little bit. Understanding the connection between the rules governing land use and the physical outcome is critical to foster a community that is an attractive place to live, work, and spend free time. But our existing specific plan was focused on enabling biotech, not explicitly allowing for places for people to live. Our vision for South Fair Oaks introduces wider sidewalks and active ground floor designs to encourage walkability with a mix of land uses residential opportunities, outdoor cafes, and maybe even a few breweries. Urban provides us a conceptual analysis, which is not meant to dictate architectural styles. Because urban allows us to visualize code changes, we can better see the character and quality of the urban form. For example, let's see how a change to setbacks can improve the pedestrian experience. If we increase the upper story setback from 5 feet to 25 feet, this will make floors 4 and 5 much less visible to pedestrians walking by. Incorporating zoning considerations into the design can help improve the urban form along Raymond Avenue. Our specific plans forecast development to 2035. By planning for the future, we can ensure a balance of jobs, housing, and access to services. So while Urban allows us to create this vision for South Fair Oaks, it can also help visualize what's on the ground. Therefore, let me hand it back to David to talk about our permitting process and how we review new projects. Since 2008, the city requires 3D model submissions for new building projects, allowing, excuse me, incorporating BIM and other types of models into the review process. With Urban, we can display the proposed models during commission meetings, allowing decision makers and the public to better understand what's being proposed. So, how do we create a place that reflects the character of Pasadena? What is that sense of place? With Urban, we can bring South Fair Oaks far beyond traditional plans and renderings. You may have heard of the Unreal Game Engine. Plans can be loaded into this video game technology allowing members of the public to experience proposed zoning changes by walking down a virtual street, demonstrating how neighborhood-scale planning can promote Pasadena's sense of place. The more we experience the future of South Fair Oaks, the better we can plan for it. Everyday ingenuity means we are bold enough to try new things, and we have many more departments in the city that are experimenting and innovating with GIS. Take a look. GIS is fundamental to epidemiologists in the work we do. The public health team here in Pasadena uses GIS for investigations of chronic diseases, mental health disorders, cancer, communicable diseases, just to name a few. And we use those analyses to drive community programs. Through spatial analysis of where cases live, for example, we were able to identify 
where feral cats and opossums have been spotted and target community messaging to lower typhus fever risk. And it worked. Just last year, we found that our targeted messaging had changed people's behavior. This year, there has only been one reported case. The power of a map is more impactful than any chart we can present. Maps drive change, and that's good public health. Within the 23 square miles of city boundaries lie 10 library branches. Residents are no more than one and a half miles from their local branch. Librarians use GIS to understand who is in their community, developing programs and collections specific to the demographics of their micro-community. And for the larger community of Pasadena, every March we administer the One City, One Story program where the entire city gets together in a citywide book club to read one book and participate in programming around that story. We create a story map of the key points in the book, mapping the locations and telling the story in a different way, opening up a new use of GIS to our diverse community. Our economic development team promotes ingenuity every day through our marketing campaign, Future Yourself Here. Using Business Analyst, we use GIS to create infographics and tapestry segments to understand our commercial areas and the communities they serve. This data helps us understand the population, household income, labor force, and the different types of consumers across the city. With this knowledge, we are able to attract the right kind of businesses that will thrive and serve the community for years to come. Leading the Intelligent City takes innovation and experimentation from all our departments, and GIS is one of our most important enabling tools. On behalf of our team and all of us at the city, we thank you.